Russia blocks UN declaration on Kassir. The UN diplomat says Russia has blocked the Security Council declaration that would have criticized the Syrian regime's offensive against the rebel-held town. They blocked the declaration because the council made no statement when the rebels seized the town. Hezbollah clashes with Syrian rebels in eastern Lebanon and kills 12. One Hezbollah fighter also slain in fighting near Balbek. So Hezbollah fighters caught a group of Syrian rebel fighters in eastern Lebanon overnight just east of the city of Balbek. The rebels were reportedly armed with rocket launchers, although their exact destination was unclear. It was the first major fighting between Hezbollah and Syrian rebels inside Lebanon. This suggests the spillover violence is growing in the wake of Hezbollah's role in the recapture of Qasir. At least that's what they say, right? Still, turning this into a ground war inside Lebanon, as well as Syria, would be a significant escalation. Multiple Israeli overflights reported in southern eastern Lebanon. The officials say Sunday's overflights most intense in recent period. So the officials report a large number of Israeli warplanes uh, flying on Sunday with the bulk of the planes that were flying the southern part of the country and others flying near this uh, city of Belbek. It says here warplanes from Israel violating Lebanese airspace are a regular occurrence, but officials say that the Sunday flights were much more aggressive and intense than other recent incidences. Israel has been using Lebanese airspace to launch attacks on Syria. It says it's uh, worth noting that these overflights are focusing on the area around Belbek, the area where uh, a major s clashes are happening between Hezbollah and Syrian rebels. Gulf Arab countries to consider action against Hezbollah. So the countries that are funding these rebels um, say here they don't like Hezbollah. Gulf Arab countries will consider taking action against Hezbollah if the Shiite Muslim Lebanese movement continues its involvement in Syria's war and interferes in Gulf, Gulf Arab affairs. I guess they could just say agendas, right? Uh, Sheikh Hamoud assassination bid aimed at inciting sedition. So Hezbollah denounced on Monday the attack that targeted the Ayman of Al Quds Mosque. It says here stressing that the assassination attempt aimed at inciting sedition and disunity in favor of the Zionist scheme. Lebanon complains to the UN over Israeli violations. The president of Lebanon ordered caretaker foreign minister to file a complaint with the United Nations over Israelis or Israeli violations of Lebanese airspace. In May, the UN called on Israel to halt increased military air patrols over Lebanon as tensions soared after Israeli airstrikes on Syria. And we have Bahrain, foreign minister, condemns Hezbollah's involvement in Syria. So this is part of the Gulf states that we were just talking about. On Sunday, uh, said the blatant interference of Lebanon's Hezbollah in Syria has exposed the group's real positions uh, and terrorist practices while urging Iran to show goodwill towards the Gulf, uh, basically the GCC, Cooperation Council. So... Uh, you know, just uh, kind of on the both sides there. I mean, we know that they're funding these uh, rebels. We know that they're mostly Sunnis. And we know it's also Israel, too, um, that's, uh, quote, interfering. Well, they're not really interfering. They've been interfering from the beginning. Now they're just actually you're starting to see uh, the forces uh, that are behind it and supporting this um, out there in, in, in uh, broad daylight. So, two Bahraini soldiers fighting for Al Nasr front killed in Syria. So it's kind of funny of Bahrain's condemning Hezbollah's involvement in Syria, yet uh, Bahraini soldiers fighting for Al Qaeda were killed in Syria just recently. Welcome to GGN. This is my website, ggnonline.com, or Global Government News. On YouTube, my channels are DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. I'd like to take a moment and just thank those that have donated. I appreciate it very much. It helps a lot. So, Syrian army seizes Syrian cylinders from militants in Hama. So, we heard about this from Turkey just recently. Turkey finds Syrian uh, gas in homes of Al Qaeda or Al Nasra terrorists. These are the, basically the people that are fighting in Syria. Uh, but now it says here the Syrian army has seized two cylinders of the nerve agent Syrian during an operation in the city of Hama. So, this is interesting because they, you know, if they caught this over here, uh, that means that this is a widespread uh, um, operation. If you remember as well, on March 19th, over two dozen people were killed and many others injured when militants fired missiles containing a chemical substance into the village near Aleppo. On May 5th, the UN uh, said and you know, found a testimony from victims and medical staff that showed foreign-back militants had used the nerve agent in Syria. So, uh, Syria basically asked the UN to to uh, to investigate this, but they did not because they uh, wanted to get uh, basically access to to the entire country, and they said no. So, they had really didn't. You know, the United Nations had no uh, intentions 
of getting down, you know, getting to the bottom of the what the rebels were doing, or quote humanitarian rights or crises, atrocities. Syrian intelligence service thwarts assassination attempt against Syrian president says Lebanese newspaper. Jordanian special services have revealed an assassination attempt against the Syrian president. It says here relevant information was given to the Syrian intelligence service in due time, which enabled the latter to destroy the plotter's plans. So this is coming after what we covered on May 19th, just recently, right? May 19th, Israel mulling plot to assassinate Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Like I said, you know, the real uh, forces behind this, quote, opposition are coming to light. Assad backers reported, because they're desperate as well, that's what I'm saying, when they do the carry out those airstrikes, they're trying to trigger Syria to do something, like I said, that has no strategic importance or um, gain, just political gain, you know, for short term. Assad backers reportedly make up 43% of the dead in Syria. So, but see, Assad doesn't have to do that because he has enough support of his people, right? So he doesn't have to do all the, all the, the political show game. A new count of the dead in Syria by the group that considers the most authority, authoritative tracker of violence there has concluded that more than 40% were government soldiers and pro-government militia members. It says civilian non-commons are the next largest group of the dead. It says deaths among anti-Assad fighters totaled 16,000, whereas the civilian non commons 35,000. So uh, I'm not sure how they really get these numbers, but, um, you know, it's talking about a rebel defector who defected from the Syrian military or 2,000. They're saying 2,000 were foreigners. I don't believe that number, 2,000. Out of 35,000? No, I, I'm not buying it, dude. Over 7,000 Syrian refugees returned from Iraq as security improves. More than 7,000 of these refugees in Iraq have crossed back to the rebel-held Syrian border town of Kamal in recent weeks due to better security there. So it says here each week we receive refugee requests to go back to their towns across the border. They are freely going back. Iraq says Israel to bear consequences in case it used our airspace for Iran's strike. So they warned the Zionist entity on Monday against using its airspace to launch a strike against the Islamic Republic. We've also warned Israel that they, if they violate Iraqi airspace, they will have to bear the consequences. So I don't know how they're going to actually fall through. But uh, it says the Americans have assured us that they will never violate Iraqi airspace or sovereignty by using the airspace to attack any of our neighbors. We've covered here before on GGN about Armenia being offered uh, deals, agreement deals with uh, Israel to use them use their country as a as a way to attack uh, Iran and they would get a you know they would get some uh, piece of the land piece of the action Clinton was paid five hundred thousand dollars or half a million dollars to speak in honor of Israeli president so the Jewish National Fund paid him to deliver the speech in the 90th birthday of Israeli president Shimon Perez but uh, it's actually scheduled for June 18th Anti-Jewish attitudes can impact the rest of the world. So, Ira Foreman, the U.S. State Department's new anti-Semitism czar, tells the Post he has a lot to learn. The appointment comes on the heels of the State Department's report describing a continued global increase in anti-Semitism and the rise of the far right in several European nations. It says here, the State Department's Office to Monitor and Combat Anti-Semitism was created in 2004 with the passing of the Global Anti-Semitism Review Act, and Foreman, former director of the National Jewish Democratic Council, is now the third official to head it. He said, We have a whole historical record of the 20th century where the Great Depression helped give rise to these fascist movements in Europe and for me. I am interested in what we can learn from that and what we're seeing in the right-wing nationalist xenophobic movements in Europe that are generating, in some cases, anti-Semitism. Israel to send African migrants to third country. Israel says here they've reached an agreement to send thousands of African migrants to an unidentified country. So it's multiculturalism uh, and non-nationalism for every other country. Uh, like they say, Africans for Africans, Asians for Asians, but Europe and America cannot be uh, just white. So that's the way it goes. But of course, Israel can. I only say that because I believe personally that, that that's why it's being done or that's who it's being done by. Iran claims to have stopped a Mossad terror network. They dismantled a terror network backed by Israel's Mossad intelligence services, which plan to disrupt the upcoming presidential election. 
CIA spy attacks targeting Iran election, says Gordon Duff. In an interview, he said that uh, basically these attacks, some of which we've heard, were scheduled to go on during the election, but not only against the Christians in Iran, but uh, Iran's Jewish population, which is a terrible embarrassment to Israel that Jews have total religious freedom in Iran and one of the highest populations as well. Iran court imposes ban on state-run newspaper for six months. Hardliners accuse the paper of false reporting. This underscores the ongoing political infighting between, between the president and the nation's religious conservatives. Ahmadinejad has already expressed annoyance at the pre-election screening process, which his close ally, uh, Vice President Mache, was disqualified as a candidate. Iran presidential candidate's staff arrested. Police detained campaigners for leading opposition candidate, Mr. Rouhani, in Tehran. Says Rouhani is close to the ruling clerical elite and criticized the government of President Ahmadinejad during the first televised debate. Canada bans almost all exports to and imports from Iran. But in a unique move, certain communication tools won't be covered by the ban, a reflection of the increasing importance, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, placed on them as a potential tool for regime change. This is from the Globe and Mail. They're saying that, right? They're out, outright, right? This is after U.S. list ban on computer exports to people in Iran. Easing of sanctions will allow U.S. residents to export communications equipment to individuals, but not to the Iranian government. U.S. to send Patriot missiles and F-16s to Jordan. The deployment of Patriot missile battery and F-16 fighters to Jordan was approved over the weekend by U.S. Central Com. They've also had exercises there as well. Also in Jordan, they arrest 13 people after riots in South over double double murder. So it had to do with the murder of two men. The video was posted on YouTube. Uh, people kicking the corpse of the two men, angry rioters towards shops and post offices, accusing the police of failing to arrest the suspects in the killing. One person said, U.S. Zionist puppet Abdul of Jordan is next. He will not escape the uprising. Jordan takes a disappointing turn towards censorship. They've initiated a ban on news sites that have not registered and been licensed by the Press and Publications Department, blocking 300 news sites. Turkey's Erdogan rejects dictator claims. Turkey's Prime Minister on Sunday rejected claims that he is a dictator dismissing protesters as an extremist fringe even as thousands return to landmark Istanbul Square that has become the site of the fiercest anti-government outburst in years. Said 10,000 people again streamed into the area on Sunday after Saturday's protests. War-torn Syria says Turkey unsafe for travel. I love this headline. Syrian authorities battling a rebel uprising in which 80,000 people have been killed on Sunday advised citizens against travel to neighboring Turkey who's been harboring these terrorists that make up most of these uh, people who are responsible for these deaths in the quote uprising, right? So it basically discredits them warning to not go to Turkey. It's, they never stop, dude. They always have to throw that, this whole little loaded term, you know? It's it's to, it's the right reality, right? It's to break through. Because I read the comments, man. I'm very happy and surprised by reading a lot of these comments from mainstream, uh, like Yahoo and that, of people who can see through the deception now. They see what's going on. So they have to put these loaded intro headlines in there, calling it a civil war, and how many people are dead, and blaming it on the Syrian government instead of the countries that are funding it, right? Instead of, uh, instead of calling it for what it is, an invasion of uh, foreign terrorists. Britain's warned to steer clear of Turkey as 1,700 protesters arrested after riots rocked the country for a third day. I guess they could put a loaded headline, too, and say, um, a war-weary Britain who's been sponsoring terrorists and who just actually sent armed shipments to the terrorists uh, who are creating this uprising uh, warned to steer clear of Turkey. We could even throw in there Britain who's facing an uprising of their own. Turkey protests continue to surge over, over 1,700 arrested, 235 separate rallies reported nationwide. So far, the crackdowns have been ineffective, and most of the protesters are, say, are basically declaring victory over the government's attempt to kick them out of the uh, tax. The Pentagon's weighing larger post-2014 force in Afghanistan. The original plan was a small force of eight to 12,000 troops. Afghanistan's National Unity Party slams U.S. for a permanent military base and I believe they made one right near Iran's border. The Afghan army and police have grown rapidly in a multi-billion international effort to build up the country's forces, which now equate to 350,000. Will it be used against Iran? U.S. armed forces piloting drones from bases in Germany. German officials have denied this.
Drone, drone surveillance contract called off by U.S. State Department and the U.S. fails to join allies in signing the U.N.'s weapons treaty. Thank you.